In this episode, I'm going to look at a Panasonic mini system. This is an SLCH90, comes with the SUCH90 tuner and three disc CD changer. The complaint on this one is that the CD player has a problem at skipping. So it could be a bad laser or a bad spin motor. That was a, a common problem with these and the parts are no longer available. So let's hope that it's not that and it's just a mechanical problem. Today we're gonna to look at this Techniques system. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is separate components and it actually is not. It's actually two pieces. The cassette deck amplifier is one and the tuner and CD player is the second. Even though it's designed to look like they're separate components, they're actually, there's just two units here. And one power supply, it's in the main unit. The complaint on this one is that the uh, CD player is skipping. So let's test it and see. You'll note that my disc is not perfect. So I'm just going to let this thing play for a bit and see uh, the complaint is it starts playing okay and it starts skipping. So I'm thinking possibly the uh, traverse is uh, gummed up. As the complaint was it worked fine when they used it and then they put it away and didn't use it for several months and then when they went to use it again it started playing and then skipping. So it kind of sounds like maybe it's just a lubrication problem on this. Let's just uh, let it play for a bit and see if it'll do it. So it's been playing for a while. I'm going to take the top off of it so we can observe the unit in operation. At this point, it hasn't skipped yet. So here's the mechanism. And I believe this unit features the disc exchange feature so I can open it and um, it'll continue to play. So it's still been playing for a while. I haven't had any problems with it yet. I'm just gonna check and stop it from playing here. Oh, when the disc tray slammed shut, I think it skipped a bit, but let me just stop it. I wanna check the, the, the traverse assembly here and just see if the grease is dry. So we'll take out the, the uh, disc clamp assembly to inspect it. To make this a little bit easier to access, I'll remove the tuner board so that I can get to the screws that are underneath here. And that can be easily removed by removing a couple screws in the back. I'm going to remove the white bracket here just so it makes it easier to see, but this does not actually have to come out. You just have to remove the tuner board and then you can actually access the screw by just moving one of the ribbon cables out of the way. But I'm going to take this out completely just so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Okay, now with the tuner assembly out of the way, I can lift out the two screws here. Remove the two screws to lift out the mechanism, the clamp. And this is the traverse, which is normally would be replaced as an entire block. Oh, there's a bit of dirt on here. Take a look at the lens. This might be part of the problem here. You see the dust? 
that may be the problem. Excessive dust on the lens. It looks like the lubricant is okay on here. It doesn't look well. I guess it's getting kind of dry. I can see where it's been. It's it's the old yellow um, molybdenum grease that's on there, but it should be redone. So we'll clear off this dust off the lens first, as you can see. There's a fair bit of dust on that lens. One has to be very careful when cleaning the lens on a CD player because it is easy to scratch. So there's no pressure put on it at all. I'm just, just very, very lightly touching the surface and spinning the uh, Q-tip around to try to clear off the dust. Another common problem on these is that the spindle motor, the bearings wear out. But this one seems to be spinning okay. When the bearings go bad, you can usually hear them, but they it'll slow down really quickly. That, that one seems to be, this one seems to be okay. The optical block just lifts up like that and I can unplug it from the main board by just undoing the connector on the side here. Okay, I've got the optical block. Normally when these blocks are sold, you, um, you take the circuit board off and you replace it as an entire block on these uh, Panasonic units. They didn't sell the laser separately. They sold it as the entire Traverse on all these Panasonic and Techniques units. I'm going to uh, open this up. I'm going to take the board off it because uh, there's a, a worm screw. You can see it in the back here. This is the one that gets gummed up and can cause it to start to skip when it's trying to play. So we're going to pull the circuit board off so that I can lubricate that assembly and then put it all back together. As you can see, it comes apart really easy. You just remove that little plastic clip, this little clip here. It holds it down. You remove that, and then the unit just pops out. These are real simple units to change. So I'm just going to remove the solder from the two motors so that I can lift the board out. I'm not going to disconnect the optical assembly on this unit, so I don't have to worry about ESD for the laser. It looks like this one, this optical block may have been replaced at one time too because it looks like these connections have been previously unsoldered and resoldered. So this is the the area that I'm concerned about here. See that there is grease in here, but it's it's um, not on the gear. It's dirty, but it is kind of dirty. Oh, there's dirt in there. So let's just let's just clear this crap out, and uh, we'll get a Q-tip in there and just try to wipe it all out. And I'll get some fresh grease in there because it looks like there's a some a fair bit of dirt in here.
I can activate this motor with my power supply to dial it down to a couple of volts and that way we can we can move the sled back and forth so I'll set it for like 1.5 volts so that should be that should be plenty to move the sled Gonna get some uh, lithium grease. We'll put a little bit of grease on the on the uh, on the worm gear there, the worm screw. There we go. So that should uh, take care of that side of it. Just gonna put some more on this other rail over here. This one's got grease on it, so I don't think there's a problem with this grease. Put some down here in the gears here so it gets into the gears here I don't want to put too much in because too much grease is worse than not enough in many cases it'll just attract dirt so we'll just put a little bit of grease down here on the on the gear
I'll just reassemble everything in the reverse order that it came out. Might be sometimes easier just to thread these wires in first before putting the disc sensor down. What this is, is this is an optical sensor that counts the discs, right? As the disc rotates so that the machine knows if there's a disc in that slot. Next is the tuner. Bring the tuner board, bring the chassis back in place, and then the tuner the chassis slips in like that. Let's it and see if it plays. Do a discus change on this. If I hit the open close button, I can put another disc in and uh, we'll change to disc number two. Whoops, now how did that slide out? We'll try that again. I kind of messed up there, didn't I? So this unit is playing now. I'm going to let it play for a while and, and see if it skips or see how it goes through the discs and make sure it's able to read all of the discs. I'm still not 100% sure that the laser is not causing a problem with this unit or the motor assembly because of the uh, of the the complaint that it, it intermittently skips. So I've gone through the lubrication procedure on this just to lubricate that mechanism and I cleaned off the lens. But because I haven't witnessed the thing actually skipping since I've been running it, I can't confirm that that's what was causing the problem. There is another way to service this thing. I took this whole a chassis assembly out to work on it, but you can actually just remove the circuit board and get to the screw underneath here. So you don't actually have to take this out. I did it in the video just to show so you can see what was going on. But you can actually, without having to remove this white plastic bracket, if you just remove the circuit board, you're able to pull this ribbon um, the flat ribbon cable out of the way enough to get to the screw. I just wanted to point that out if you're taking one of these apart You don't have to remove this although it's only an extra two screws on the back And then once you've got the circuit board out, it'll just lift right out It just makes getting to the mechanism a little bit easier and, and easier to see on camera But normally if I was servicing one of these things, I wouldn't bother. I would just uh, remove the circuit board a little more difficult to get at the ribbon connector to disconnect it from the circuit board though if you remove the bracket it's much easier because you've got all that slack you can pull through so you can unplug it and plug it back in so it's easier if you take this out and that's why I did it anyway the units playing I'm gonna let it play and see if it'll go through all these discs and um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll send it out and I'll have to let the, the fellow that owns us know that you know it may very well still be the, the pickup is bad if it still starts skipping for him then it's obviously gonna be a bad pickup but uh, I can't confirm that at this point because it's playing fine. It's been playing these. This, it's played this disc through, and I'm now playing this one. I've got that. When I first started out, I played the first disc, which is one of these. I mean, it's pretty hacked up. I still played it okay. Uh, this is one of the dark green, uh, older generation of CDR. So I'm going to let it play through the three discs, and uh, we'll watch it and see what happens. And uh, fingers crossed. But again, because the unit itself never really did fault. I can't say with certainty that that's the problem, 
but there's a good chance that it was just gummed up and was sticking. We'll let it run and see. Well, it's made it into the NAS disk. We're already, uh, well, it's about five tracks in on this disk, I think. No, we're 11 tracks in. It's been going for about an hour now and uh, still playing. Skip tracks. So I'm going to put this unit together and just let it play for a while before sending it on its way. But uh, it sounds like it's working okay now. As I say, I don't know whether I got it or not. I, when we get these intermittent problems, it's really tough to, really, it's tough to know. All you can do is run them and see where they continue to run. Test the tape deck on this too. Yeah, tape deck seems to be working. It's tape deck number one. I'll try tape deck. Oh, there's a tape in tape deck number two. Well, let's try that. That one seems to be working too. So, tapes. Okay, and there's no complaint on the tape. The complaint was the CD. So we'll go back to. Uh, the CD player. Okay, that about does it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.